Brenda Sturr has a list of only 1,200 people and made more than $90,000 in one single affiliate promotion. If you want to know how to take a small list and turn it into massive profits, listen up. Brenda is sharing all of the strategies that led to her success. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. So today is a super fun episode. This is an old interview, actually, from a couple of years ago, still during the pandemic. And I'm pulling it from the vault because this was previously only available to our Insider Club. And, you know, I wanted to make this available to everyone because this is such a powerful episode. I interviewed Brenda Sturr. She was an affiliate for Stu McLaren. She made $90,000, right? $90,000, one and a half times the average American's income, yearly income, she made $90,000 in only two weeks. Two weeks, she made 90 grand. I mean, think about that. From a list of only 1,200 people, actually a little bit less than that. Now, the math on that at 1,200 is $75 per subscriber in two weeks. If in a month, you're making two bucks a subscriber, you're doing phenomenal. She made $75 per subscriber in two weeks. So how did she do it? Well, she shares all of that in this episode. She shares how she reached out to the creators of the product to Stu, how to go through launch content with your list, how to use key affiliate marketing 101 strategies, but actually implement them. I share some of the 101 stuff, right? The basics. She executed the basics better than anyone else and made $90,000 in two weeks from a list of 1,200 people. It's amazing. So affiliates, listen and learn from Brenda. Follow what she teaches here. Don't try to get super fancy. Just, just do what she does. I'm not promising 90 grand from 1,200 subscribers in two weeks. No, I'm promising you make a lot more money than you're currently making. And then affiliate managers, listen up and learn how to help your affiliates. Because you may be thinking, Brenda Stir, right? 1,200 people on her list. I mean, why would I invest a lot of effort in her? Stu invested in her you'll hear that. Like some of the stuff that Stu did, some of the stuff that we did as the affiliate, you know, that my company does as managing Stu's affiliate program. Only had a list of 1,200 though. We could have just got like one or two sales max, maybe four. No, she made over 45 sales. No, she made 90,000. I said, I got to do the math on that. If she made 90, she did over 100 sales. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, a lot of money. So affiliate managers, listen up and learn from her as well. All right, with that said, let's jump right into my interview with Brenda Stir. Well, welcome, Brenda. Hello, hello. Stir, not star, or both. Oh, come on, let's go with star. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, check this out. 1,200 people that she had to work with. She's mm-hmm. 300, a quarter of her, this list went through mm-hmm. the workshop for mm-hmm. Stu McLaren, 17 people bought. It was her best yep. affiliate promotion ever. Yep. And her, it led to her best affiliate month ever. Ever. So Brenda, I am so excited to talk about this today because the 1,200 people is the thing that stands out. Like you didn't do yeah, that. It was a small list. You know, 100,000 people. And so before no, you even get in, I just want to go ahead and tell everyone who says, well, I don't have enough people on my list to succeed. Shut up. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Brenda did this with 1,200 people. Yep. And I yeah. noticed it. And that's why she's on today. So yeah, there we go. So yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit before we, you know, we jump into this specific promo. Just tell us real quick what your platform is, who you are, your whole life story, all that fun stuff. So my three-hour elevator story is. Um, <laughs> so I work with direct sellers and network marketers, and I help them build authentic, fan-free marketing plans online. My goal is to rid the world of bad direct selling because it's spammy and. Everyone knows somebody who's really bad at direct selling and network marketing. And a lot of my clients are introductory. They come in not having a lot of marketing background. They just want to make some extra money selling a product that they like to their friends and family. And the majority of direct sellers are part-timers. They don't necessarily have big marketing budgets. They don't have a lot of marketing infrastructure. A lot don't have their own blogs or anything like that. So I have a membership and write a lot of free resources to direct sellers and network marketers through some of my public 
social channels. And the way that tribe fit in to the whole track was basically like this. I've been doing my coaching program for about seven years. And a lot of people who come in to direct selling, I work primarily with party plan direct sellers, Pampered Chef, Mm -hmm. Avon, Mary Kay, jewelry sellers, clothing sellers, things like that. And a lot of people who come in find that they're constrained by their corporate brand and they tend to realize they can go independent into their own boutique, into their own social monetization in some way and realize they can make more money on their own. So they sort of age out of direct selling. A lot of people end up leaving direct selling. So I was losing people on the backside of my membership because they were like, well, I'm not a direct, I'm not in direct sales anymore. And then I'm going to cancel and leave. So we put a plug in that hole and we funneled them off to a new group. We funneled them off to sort of an advanced marketing for independent business owners group. And that is the group that we captured their emails, the front end of that, at the front end of that list, the front end of that entry. And then that was our, we call it our monetized group, (laughs) our monetized list. And it had about 1,200 people on it. And they're all people who've been a part of my community in some form or fashion who simply sort of moved through all my resources that have moved into advanced stuff. They didn't really know what advanced was. They might not have websites yet, but they want to do something. A lot of people in direct selling specifically have large social followings. They have a big Facebook group. They have a large Facebook page. They have an Instagram following. And then they end up leaving whatever company they sell for. And they don't know what to do with the social following that they've already amassed. Mm. So they have a really interesting problem. They have a lot of people captured in one spot and they don't know what to do with them. So our strategy was, okay, well, let's put a advanced subject on top of our membership and our coaching and put in some affiliate content right there. So that's where we put Tribe. So our Tribe launch was, we had 1,200 people on our target list. 300 of them went through the workshop with Stu McLaren. And as you said, Matt, 17 joined Tribe. Mm -hmm. And we actually, we had a downsell offer for those who didn't. And we had about 25 people on the downsell pick up an extra offer there. So we really, we came through all a tribe and it was my biggest single month as a, or in the first year as a tribe affiliate first. And it was my biggest single month as an affiliate marketer ever. So <laughs> it was good on all kinds of levels. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk, I, I want to come back to that down. Actually, let's go there now and then we'll come back to promotional strategies. So that's something I've only seen done a few times with affiliate offers. You had a downsell offer. Um, mm-hmm. Tell us about that. Is that something you've done before? Or is this the first time? No. It was actually something I saw someone else do. I saw someone else doing it on a Facebook ad who had done Tribe. And I was like, well, that's smart. She's down selling them into one of her courses. I was like, I could do that. I have a course, sort of a monetize your social strategy course. And I could simply offer them that course. So I retargeted the list of 200 and whatever it was, 280 people who did the workshop but didn't join Tribe. And 10% of them took that offer. So that was a $200 offer right there. And that included one of my courses and then two of what were my tribe bonuses that were asset packs, graphics and digital pack of content. So they got a big bonus right there. So that actually turned into another piece of revenue that we tied rec- uh, right onto the back end of the tribe launch. Mm. I love that. If we ended this right now, that was like totally worth all of our members watching. This so thing. I'm telling you, you guys, I learned it from somebody online. I deconstructed what she did and... I will never do another try another affiliate launch that doesn't have a downsell on the back end of it. Yeah. It was brilliant. Super smart. Brilliant. Yeah, we we do them sporadically. We kind of pick and choose like if there's an affiliate offer that we're promoting and we don't really have a what sort of look for a one that fits. I can't think of Yeah, sort of a natural compliment. Yeah. Thinking of a multisyllabic word that fits with that, but anyway, you know, <laughs> that was just my way to use the word multisyllabic there, actually. Very fancy. Um, that's a $10. That's a grad school word right there. Yeah, it's a grad school word. Unfortunately, I try to speak at a fifth grade level. So yeah, we do it sporadically though. I mean, it really does work. I mean, you've built the list and a lot of times, yeah. especially if we're running ads to those affiliate promos, a lot of times like we're breaking even on the actual commissions. And there's a reason for that. It's a long-term play. It's about relationships for us. But then we make the money on the down sell. Exactly. And the big benefit of the downsell is Stu and the tribe launch did all the heavy lifting. He built all the value, right? He built all the value proposition and he offered a $2,000 program and I downsold to a $200 offer. 
Yeah. Well, that was a no brainer. Mm-hmm. It was ninety percent discount. So that was a nice little bonus right there, and picked up probably four or five thousand dollars on that. Yeah, that's awesome. So specifically, let's start at the beginning because that's a good place to start. There, we got to get people into the workshop, and you got a quarter yep. of your people into the workshop, mm-hmm. which is insane. Because I'm doing yeah. the math, we got two point. Five ish percent of our people into the workshop. So, what did you do in there well, to do that? We did a few things. And I will say that 25% will probably not be what it looks like next year <laughs> because <laughs> this was the first time I had done Tribe Launch. So, it mm-hmm. was a new list and a new market for this workshop. Sure. So, next year will undoubtedly be lower. Yeah. But for this, what we did is we did very targeted emails. We followed the tribe email schedule. We posted on my public channels and we didn't run any ads. This was There was no ads at all. We didn't do any ads this year because it was our first year doing it. We're like, well, we don't really know what we're doing with ads yet, so we don't want to try it. Mm-hmm. So we really just talked it up. We talked it up a lot. I made a lot of tribe imagery. I had Stu come in and we did an interview in my group in the group that was sort of my advanced group, the one I said that had about 1,200 people in it. Mm -hmm. And then I took that video with Stu and I sliced it up and made it into little promos and I stuck them everywhere. Oh, nice. I literally stuck it everywhere. When did you, Um, in in relation to the calendar, like in terms of- Ideally, I would have done it, you know, like two months earlier, but I didn't. I did it like literally the week before Tribe of Workshop Week. But still um, before April 23rd, which is... Yes, what yes. I did it says. I did it before... Yes, it was before April 23rd. And mm-hmm. I did it... So I emailed it. I really had no expectation because I'm assuming he was doing a gajillion of them. And I'm not a big affiliate. I don't have a giant list. You know, I'm small fish in a big pond. And I was sort of like, well, the worst they can say is, no, he's not free. But I figured I would be brave enough to ask. So I emailed in and I said, is Stu free to do a little mini interview? And they gave me two dates. I took the first one that was available. I rearranged my calendar to make it available. And then we went live, did a little mini interview. The whole thing was a half an hour. And then at the very beginning, before we even did the interview, I asked him if he could do some promos using my terminology for my community. And then he did. He did little promo slices and then we sliced those up and those became what I was posting all around through the entire workshop, try launch, the retargeting. We were watching the workshop together in that group. I shared all of his lives as watch parties. So we just had a lot of concentrated focus. That was the only thing we were doing in my group or in that specific group was the tribe workshop. So it was really a very highly concentrated effort. And I did the entire workshop with everybody because I wanted to make sure I was present and answering questions. And they saw me as being not just an affiliate who drops in to make all the money, but, you know, actively doing the work and realizing the value with my community. So the big, big things were getting Stu in was a huge coup. And I was simply brave enough to ask, emailed in and said, is Stu free to do a little mini interview in my group? And maybe on the back and said, yeah, here's some dates. Like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I was so nervous. I honestly, I was so nervous. And He was more than gracious. He did exactly what I asked. He did the little mini, he said the words. I was able to record it. It was a joke that he did it. He did the interview from his bedroom. It was when we were just on early lockdown, right? In like mid-April. So I have an outtake of him going, I can't even believe I'm doing this from my bedroom. So that became a little outtake. And we just, I used all the material. I used all the assets. Awesome. I used everything that I could. That is so awesome. I mean, it's so funny because I just finished doing a podcast interview for our podcast with Joe Fear, and we were talking about asking people to be on podcasts and how do you get guests? And he was like, we both kind of agreed there isn't really a science to it. You just ask. You just and ask. The thing is, most people have this like innate fear that like, if I ask Oprah, she'll say no. Yeah, probably. I mean, she's Oprah. But here's the thing, you know, at some level you start asking people and and I was sharing with him that in my old podcast when I was, I was a nobody, like I had like 800 listeners. It was a rinky dink podcast. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And I asked John Huntsman, who was like, I think think he was the former ambassador of the United Nations. He had a book coming out and I said, you want to be on my podcast? Got a 20 minute interview with him. I'm like, yeah, I'm talking to John. Like I'm nobody's. I know it's insane. 
Because this is what I try to tell people. And I, I work with marketers, right? I work with marketers who are trying to get bookings to make sales. They're trying to get parties and events and things like that. Yep. And so much is a mindset game that if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So I'm very much about trying to walk the talk that if I'm not going to ask and be brave enough to ask, and even if I get a no, at least I know. But, you know, I asked and I got a yes. And I rode that horse all month long. <laughs> I use that video over and over and over again. I sliced it. I put it into promos. I put it into gifts. I put it into, I linked back to it in emails. I put it everywhere. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's brilliant though. That is brilliant. So you did the promo, you did the little slices, you did the watch parties of the lives, you went through yep. the workshop. Like this is yep. the stuff. Yeah. There's a word in the English language that I'm a big is it fan a, of. Is it a $10 it, word? No, it's just hustle. Hustle. There's a, there's a whole lot of hustle and tribe. Yeah. It's just, it was hustle. Uh, uh, the other I, thing I did, the other thing I, point out was, I know the commission because I'm an affiliate manager, you know, if you don't know that. And so yeah. I know what commissions are in a $1,997 product is $798.80. Every watch party, if it made you one sale, you hosted yeah. a, an hour long watch party, $798.80. Yeah. I, I personally don't make $100 an hour. No. Most people don't. So if you think, gosh, that's a lot of work. What yeah. if I just paid you eight hundred dollars an hour and I'd be okay every hour? <laughs> every you, hour, just for showing. You would host watch parties all freaking day long. All day long. So all day long. Yeah. Now the other thing that I did is I went through Tribe last year as yeah. a student, and I had a lot of success with Tribe last year, and I actually spoke on stage at Tribe Live. So my team had pictures of that as well. So I used all of those images as well of me and Stu together. So anywhere you have an opportunity to get a picture with the person you're an affiliate for <laughs> is a big value. Even if it's just a selfie in the hallway, anywhere you can create those relationship points are highly valuable because they become future marketing collateral. So we used all of that. I wrote, I think, two or three different blog posts that were all about what my story was and my recommendation for Tribe. And we had it backlinked everywhere. I mean, we, I literally over-promoted it everywhere. <laughs> it's so funny that you mentioned that. I'm trying to find it on here. We have a folder. I'm not going to be able to find it in time. But we have a folder in Dropbox. It's basically just nothing but me with people. You know, it's yeah. like, here's a picture of me with Dean Graziosi. Here's a picture of me with Russell Brunson. I try to make them as, you know, like, I try not to make them like the hallway pictures. And we purposely took a bunch of pictures with Stu at a conference that we were together at, you know, like very just real quick, just take a bunch of pictures, different settings. And then we totally forgot to use them. <laughs> In all of our promos, I was going to, go <laughs> to find pictures of, I was using the pictures that they gave us. Yeah. And as soon as you said oh, that, that's what we now, did too. I did like it a was, mental it was just much like, oh, light bulb, right? Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, we literally went through all the trouble to take all those pictures specifically. For, and this was back in November of last year, specifically for this promo. I'm so glad I could help you out today, man. <laughs> Never remembered to use them. So next year, we're going to, we're going to do better. We're going to actually go up to Toronto and spend, you know, hopefully if everything clears up with, yeah coronavirus we'll go up there and spend a couple of days with them and report some videos and take some pictures together but then we just need to remember to actually use them well so. there's that yeah <laughs> oh my goodness this has been oh my god that's so funny i have a couple more questions we wrap up but i mean this is like so f i just i mean i'll just show everybody like these are my notes already okay so i'm already taking a lot of notes here and we've got some calls to actions for people so let's fast forward so you got people into the workshop you got 17 people in or you, you got 300 people into the workshop and you share yeah. a lot of those strategies. Is there anything else you did in that phase that you didn't cover? I want to give you a chance to. Let's see. Did the workshop, I was, oh, I was on one of the, I went live with Stu during the workshop. Okay. During, I was, I went live during the workshop with Stu, not because I asked to be, but because I was simply active in the workshop group, right. in the launch group, the membership subscription group. So I also know Shanna and I can message her and be like, so what's going on? Yes. <laughs> so make friends with the support team of your affiliates. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Big one. No, who you actually need to know. For the there's the decision makers and then there's the influencers of the decision maker. Yep. So become friends with those people. So anyway, I went live with Stu on one of his telecasts in Open Cart Week and then shared my story there. 
And then we watch party that back into my groups and had a whole bunch because they've now been down the workshop, open cart week. We're like a week and a half into this whole thing. I've been marketing it for a month. They were really, really into me being on the live with Stu. They really liked that. And then I was online on cart close night. I was literally online. I was doing follow-up messages. I was messaging the people and saying, hey, I saw you were in the workshop. Do you have any questions I can answer? I was doing the follow-up right at Thursday night cart close yeah. from my couch with my kids watching TV. Muscle. Yeah, I was doing the work. I was doing the follow-up. I was in fin- closing the deals as it would be. Mm-hmm. And then I also had my own tribe bonuses. I was really focusing on those as an upsell as well. So I used those as leverage and they didn't know there was going to be a downsell offer. I didn't come up with that until after Tribe closed when I saw someone else's Facebook ad. <laughs> I was like, hmm, that's easy. We can do that. That's like two yeah. emails right there. <laughs> and honestly, in the downsell, we didn't even, we thought it was kind of a bust because we only got like two sales out of the first email. I'm like, well, they didn't do it right. And then they all came in on the last day. They were like the last email, bam, this is the offer expires tonight. We got like 18 of them in an hour. Yep. It's crazy. Deadline dancers. Yes. <laughs> um, man, this is Brenda. Wow. So you actually just took us from into the open cart period and you mentioned some great strategies there. There is something I want to highlight that we didn't really lean into too much. You said, you know, we've been talking about this for a month, but we're really only like 10 days into the workshops, I think 10 days long and the open cards four days right. long. So what were you I started doing? teasing it in advance. Yeah. They knew that Tribe was right. They They knew that Tribe was coming. I had written blog posts. I had started talking about it. I had shared my own story with Tribe and how I went through it and had a lot of success with it. I just started teasing it and saying, you guys, the Tribe Workshop's coming. Tribe Workshop's coming. So it wasn't that it was a whole lot of heavy promotion as much as it was just part of regular conversation that it was coming up. And I do that all the time. That's just teasers. That's just lead up. Any promotion you're doing, there should be teasers and hints and you guys, I got something coming. I wonder what it is. Those kinds of little things. I do that a lot. And I work with mostly women. I don't know if it's something that appeals to women, but women have a lot of FOMO <laughs> and there's a lot of value and leverage in that in marketing. <laughs> do they? Okay. I don't market to men, so I don't try to presume how I know that I don't have it. Think. Yeah. <laughs> I know how my husband thinks and that's about it. <laughs> so I just started teasing it and hinting about it that I was making a graphic or I was writing a blog post. Hey guys, I'm working on my big tribe blog post. What are you writing today? Those kinds of little teasers Mm -hmm. that are just sort of regular community engagement, but they're starting to plant the seeds that this workshop is coming, something's happening and get yourself geared up. It was just a lot of, I used a long runway. I probably started talking about tribe in mid-March. About five weeks. Yeah, five, six weeks in advance. That's awesome. Probably a good five, I'd say mid-March because they knew I was excited about it. And because I really wrote it last year hard, because last year it changed my whole business. Tribe totally changed my business last year. That's a totally different story for another day. But it's a powerful and, story from a marketing standpoint. That was yeah, that was one of the it, biggest differences. We talked about what made a difference from 2019 to 2020 for us. The biggest difference was we went through Tribe. You know, when we promoted yep. in 2019, we did great. I don't remember the exact numbers. Let's say about fifty thousand dollars in commissions. That was awesome. But the story was, Stu's great. I like Stu. He's worked with these people. Stu's amazing. Mm-hmm. That works to a point. The message right. this year was, hey, the whole reason why I don't have to lay off anybody during this COVID crisis exactly. is because I have a membership site. And um, yes, Stu's the reason exactly. so go buy his course. <laughs> exactly. Let me tell you my tribe story. Let me show you my tribe pictures. Let me show you my before and after. This is yeah. my real story. And that had an immense amount of emotional value. Yeah personal connection value. So yeah, this was our single biggest affiliate month and our single biggest affiliate return. It was about, I should have looked up the number before we started. I want to say it was around $15,000 total. Plus the down sell made it about 20. So 20,000 all in on Tribe. And then coupled with one other large affiliate offer I was running in a different group. This was over here on this short little small list, right? These 1,200 over here. I've got 50,000 on this side. (laughs) <laughs> so I was doing another little thing over on this side. And uh, those two things together created my single biggest affiliate month ever. Love that. Love that. So yeah. Brenda, if somebody wants to come follow you and see how you do this stuff, because I think they should. I think they should. Ah. I like it because it's, you did some things that, the downsell thing was something, again, we've done before. We I think we, I think the reason, honestly, why we haven't done it in probably about six promos is we keep forgetting. So I wrote that. It needs to be part of your project plan. 
yeah, well, I wrote that down as a note for our project manager to add that. To yeah. We just clone, like, the shell of a, an affiliate promo is just copied. The It's in Asana. Yeah. It's all just copied know, over. Exactly. Like, we need to add that. I love the promo slices. That was really cool. I love the watch parties. Those are two things I've, we've never done that we're going to definitely have to start doing. So I'm totally, uh, this is like free consulting for me, which is great. <laughs> well, you know, I think the, the best way I could sort of put a bow on it is my goal through the tribe launch was to be present. Yeah. I wanted to be present. So whether that means I was live watching the videos with them, whether it was I was sharing my own story, whether it was I was going live with Stu, I wanted to make sure that I was present and they saw me in it because that I was doing the follow-up. I was checking in on their questions. I was answering questions in our free group. And I did it with a small list. I mean, this little slot, this little side list the subset is, like I said, it's only 1,200 people. And we had a whole lot of goodwill in that little slice. And it's the biggest overarching thing is what I personally feel about affiliate marketing in general is people will buy you when they believe in you, yep. right? When they believe your story, when they believe that you are endorsing a product that you personally used, loved, had value from, because they're not just buying the product, they're buying your story with the product. Mm-hmm. So... And that's being present and showing the good, the bad, and the ugly. So if you want to, you know, I started marketing this year's tribe maybe in March, but I started talking about tribe a year ago. Nice. They knew my story with it. So I don't think I'll have 25% next year, but I probably will. I'll probably be able to 10 or 15%. There'll be people who re- go through it again. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'll be pretty good with that. I'll be happy with those numbers. You'll get yeah. some sales from people who went from those 283 that didn't buy this year, you'll get some of those sales next year, which will be really yep. cool. That's one of the things exactly. that we found was a about a quarter of our buyers this year, people that we, all we did this year was just remind them again. They actually mm-hmm. went through last year. So so right. I think people should follow you. I think they should yeah. connect with you. What's the best way for folks to do that? So I have two things. One is my Facebook page. The best thing I can offer is my Facebook page. It's facebook.com, sweet Brenda, S-U-I-T-E, Brenda. That's my public Facebook page where we talk about marketing and personality and show the occasional picture of my kids and all the random, you know, the randomness that goes on a Facebook page. And the other thing, Matt, is I have a 20 ways to monetize your social strategy ebook that Mm -hmm. is free for everybody as well. And that is at brendastir.com forward slash 20 ways. Of the 20 ways in that ebook, 20 ways to monetize your social strategy, I have used personally 19 of them. The only okay. thing I have not done is a Patreon program. Okay. And that's the two only thing I haven't done. Ways, just to be clear. 20 ways. Two zero ways. Correct. Okay. Cool. Cool. Good. Because I can't spell the word 20. I know. I can't either, right? I have, uh, <laughs> I try to keep my pretty length really short. <laughs> English, the way we do numbers is really weird mm-hmm. in, in English. It makes no sense whatsoever. At least that's what Malcolm Gladwell says. So, well, Brenda, thank you so much. This has been absolutely, absolutely amazing. I have loved it. Thank you so much, Matt. I really, really am honored to have been invited and I'm excited to share the value and the message. So I hope you got as much out of that as, well, I hope you got as much out of it as I'm hoping you did. Again, a lot of basics. Nothing Brenda said makes you go, whoa, that is a brand new strategy. That's, that's, that's something. If you found yourself going, I, I know all this stuff. Okay, are you executing on it? That's something I find so often is like, we're looking for the next new thing. What's the new strategy? I'm already doing three things. I'm already doing this. I'm already using AI. Cool. Are you using AI perfectly? Have you mastered it? Well, I'm already doing an interview with the, are you you doing a great interview? Are you doing the extra? Are you executing on the basics at an A plus level? No, you're executing on 10 things at a B minus level instead of one or two or three things at an A plus level. So nothing Brenda said was revolutionary or mind blowing or, you know, just makes you go, I gotta gotta take notes. You might not have taken any notes, but the thing that she did is execute. So that's my question for you. Are you executing? And if you're not, go back and listen again and start executing on the things that she talks about. So I'd love to hear from you. Maybe that's your biggest takeaway is that I got to execute. Share with me. Text me anytime at 260-217-4619. I'd love to hear from you on this or anything else. You got questions? Text me, 260-217-4619. 
Lastly, make sure you hit subscribe because in the next episode, I'm going to be sharing the top 10 pet peeves affiliates have with affiliate programs. So good. I got so many pet peeves that I could have shared, but I'm going to narrow it down to the top 10 pet peeves that affiliates have with affiliate programs. So make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss that episode. I'll see you then. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguide.tv. And if you have a question, ask it at asktheaffiliateguide.com. Who knows? Maybe you even be featured on an upcoming episode. And lastly, if you haven't yet, make sure to leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this episode. See you soon.